Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and we are here to talk about Necromunda in this episode, which is a Matariki special. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, what I just said, the Matariki is the Māori New Year, basically, over here in New Zealand, Aotearoa, and it's a celebration of the stars. Um, so this is a special day for us here. It's a public holiday. And um, I thought I'd give you a different type of video this time, actually, because um, I actually had it suggested a couple times, because I think a lot of my... Necromunda gang guides and videos are usually aimed at the sort of intermediate to more advanced players in terms of um, stuff that we're looking at generally. So in this episode I'm actually going to give you a guide to the six house gang boxes in terms of the models and stuff. Um, the uh, weapons accessories and the extras that you can have and, and just give you a sort of overview of where I think the best value is if you're looking to get into Necromunda. Um, in the boxes and the miniatures that you can get available at your disposable through Games Workshop. So I'm going to go through it um, alphabetically here, um, and we're just going to explore, um, you know, how accessible these gangs are to start with, um, in terms of building your sort of most, well not most optimal I suppose, but most sort of basic gang lists that you're going to want to use, using the actual miniatures that you get in the boxes, if that makes sense. So um, we'll get straight into it um, rather than confusing you too much with stuff. I'm just going to get straight into it and we're going to start alphabetically here with, of course, House Cordor. Now, House Cordor are the most hoardy of the, of the six house gangs. And what I mean by that is that they, have, they will need to have lots and lots of bodies and they will always have more bodies than the opponent in terms of the number of fighters that are actually uh, on the field at any time. So... That does raise a few, um, well not a few issues I suppose, but it does mean that you would probably need two of the starting boxes to actually successfully run, run a corridor gang in a campaign setting, I would say. Um, now you can of course equip them with more expensive weapons and have less numbers, but the whole point of corridor is that they're quite hoardy, so I would totally recommend picking up two of the starting boxes here. And this is the house corridor box in the uh, in the picture here. so. By the looks of it, we've got um, 10 fighters in the list, of course. Um, some are armed with close combat weapons and pistols. We've got some flails, some axes, some stub guns, and some auto pistols there. We've also got some auto guns, uh, the odd sort of grenade or Molotov cocktail, which is an incendiary charge in game. Um, those are pretty good to have. We've also got um, your um, polearm blunderbusses and polearm auto guns there as well, which are essential to the way that House Cordor play. So you are going to need those, that's for sure. Um, the other thing you've got on your leader here, we've got a Hand Flamer and a Cult Icon, neither of which are particularly important on a Cordor list, if you ask me. Um, but next to that, on the bottom right, we have a Heavy Crossbow, which is definitely an excellent weapon. Um, and you get two of those in the box, because there are two sprues. So it looks like you, I think off the top of my head, in the sprues department, you get two or three Blunder poles, maybe, I'm not sure how many auto gun blunderbusses you get, but you do get enough um, blunder poles. I would say if you're going to get two boxes, you're definitely going to be covered. If you only get one box, you might only be partially covered for the blunder poles. Um, so, yeah, like I said, if you're going to run House Cordor, then you're going to want two of these boxes, I think, if you're going to play, play campaign games. If you're playing just exhibition games and just p pissing around, then it's fine. Just get one of these boxes. Um, now, each of these house gangs does have an upgrade kit. The upgrade for House Cordor is, of course, the Redemptionist box. So we're just going to have a quick look at that, um, and we'll explore how... How important it is to have this box, really. So House Cordor is a bit different to the other houses in that instead of having super champions and prospects in a box, we've now got the House, uh, sorry, the Redemptionist arm of House Cordor here. So as you can see in the picture, this is the Redemptionist box. Unfortunately, for some reason, it only comes with six bodies. So we only have six fighters in here. However, they are slightly better equipped than the Cordor. That said, six is not enough if you are to play a purely redemptionist gang you would need two or three boxes of these to be honest um, now we do have a nice coverage of weapons in here though so it's worth mentioning we've got some auto pistols at the back left there a fire pike which is an excellent weapon uh, we've got an auto gun with an exterminator cartridge on it there and a grenade in hand we have an eviscerator which is absolutely essential for um, redemptionists because they're they're just awesome we've then got a leader up the front there with the book of the redemption and a chain axe with an eviscerator on it sorry chain axe with a exterminator cartridge on it which is an excellent weapon as well 
And the bottom right, we have a shotgun with an exterminator cartridge on it as well. So all very good weapons, all stuff that you are going to use with your redemptionists. So if you are to go down the pure redemptionist route, then you'd need two or three boxes of these. Um, and you don't need an upgrade kit because there isn't one for the um, redemptionists. However, if you were to mix Cordor and Redemptionists, then I'd say one box of each is probably enough actually to start with in a campaign. Uh, you've got six Redemptionists and ten Cordor, so that's um, not bad at all actually. Um, so you could do that 100%. Um, so looking at the, um, the upgrade kit for House Cordor, like I just mentioned, it doesn't come with any upgrades for the Redemptionists, but it does have um, plenty of stuff for Cordor here. So. Let's have a look. So on the top there, we've got some flamers actually that are attached to pole arms. Now, flamers aren't very good on a cordial list because you've got better options and blundered poles are the one thing that are a better option generally. So I would say that because they're pole arm shaped, you could probably use these as, um, as blunder poles and most people are gonna be fine with it. Just use them as a proxy blunder pole. Um, so you've got two extra blunder poles there, really, as long as your arbitrator's cool with it, as long as your opponents are cool with it, I can't see why they wouldn't be. You've then got some sawn off shotguns, which I love. So sawn off shotguns are good, 15 credits for a pretty decent weapon at close range, why not? Below that, we've got two chain glaives. Chain glaives are 60 credits, very expensive for what they do. I don't really see you getting much use out of these, but they are really, really cool, and they also look really, really cool too, so why not? We've then got a couple of axes, uh, a sort of axy looking thing, and um, some two-handed hammers. Uh, the two-handed hammers are never gonna be really much use, but they do look very, very cool, so if you want to go rule of cool, then absolutely. I've got one actually, um, just because it looks cool. Below that, we've also got two bottles, sort of Molotov cocktails, which are in sendry charges. Those are very worth having. And very importantly, next to those, you've got some long rifles. So long rifles are pretty crucial, I would say. Very, very good on your cordial champions, as, as well as your sort of cross, heavy crossbows. But long rifles are excellent weapons, so you need those. You really need those because you don't get them in the actual plastic kit for cordial. Below that, we've got some uh, auto gun flamer combi weapons, which again, not great. And we've got some two-handed axes and auto pistols there as well, which again, completely not needed. Below that, we've got some heavy stubbers. Now I'd say heavy stubbers are worth having, totally, for cordor. You could, you could totally run heavy stubbers in a cordor gang, fine, instead of your heavy crossbows, maybe. Uh, heavy stubbers are pretty solid weapons all around, I'd suppose. Um, and then below that, we've got some flails, which are excellent, definitely need those, and some heavy flamers which are dread dreadful and I just wouldn't use them at all. So all in all that's a pretty good box. I think it, I, I'd get it just purely for the um, long rifles and sendry charges um, and the extra blunder poles actually that you could use those as uh, and the flails as well of course. Uh, you've also got some heads at the bottom there. Uh, some really nice heads actually. I think these are these are some good additions to the cordor heads that you get in the box. Actually some of them are nicer in a lot of ways. I actually got these this set when it was a Forge World set. Um, so mine are all resin, they're not quite as well cast as the plastic ones of course, but now they're plastic so you can really um, do a lot more with them. But that's Cordor. In a nutshell, I think if you were to get into Cordor, I don't personally think they are a beginner friendly gang particularly, so maybe just don't play Cordor if you're, if you're completely new to the game. Maybe go, maybe go with Goliaths or Orlocks or even Escher um, as a starting gang, I think that would be a, probably a better choice for you. Not not in terms of money and ease and stuff, just in terms of how they play. Cordor can be a little bit complicated with the um, Articles of Faith and whatnot. Um, so there you go, that is House Cordor. Um, so a fairly affordable gang, but you're gonna need a few, you're gonna need a few boxes and you're definitely gonna need the upgrade set and you're probably gonna want the Redemptionists, really, in summary. So there you go. So, alphabetically, the next uh, house gang that we're going to be looking at here is, of course, House de Lac, the uh, House of Shadow. Now, we can see here in the picture, they look really, really fucking cool. And um, they've got so much class. I love the models for House de Lac. They are brilliant. However, this box is a bit of a letdown. Um, and I think most people complained about this when it came out and just that it didn't really have the weapons that you are going to be using uh, or enough of them. It doesn't have enough flechette pistols. It doesn't have enough long rifles. It doesn't have any web weapons apart from web gauntlets. Um, you are not given many good options in the actual set here. So you can see there's a few pistols. We've got auto, auto pistols. We've got um, grav pistols. We've got two of those, I believe, in the set. Some las pistols, some las guns and auto guns, but they go across the back. We have got a long rifle across the back there as well, but um, it's nice to have them in hand, isn't it? 
uh, and some throwing knives as well which is something that you're not going to use that often um, plenty of grenades though some nice grenades in hand there and some really nice poses on these miniatures too but in terms of the amount of fighters that you get in the set, then 10 is great. Uh, so this is a good, st I mean, you're gonna need this starting box, of course, if you're gonna start Dulac. Um, I don't think you need another box of these, purely because the, um, the upgrade set does give you what you need in terms of the extra bodies. And we're gonna go and look at that now, but just an overview uh, of this starter set, it is kind of essential that you get the weapon upgrade kit for this, and we're gonna go and look at that in a minute. But it's just not enough to actually run a starting gang in terms of the equipment, to be honest. So there we go. Um, looking at the upgrade set for House de Lac, this one, by contrast, is actually really, really good value. So what you get here is the only plastic brute in the game so far, I believe, except for obviously Ambots and Nogrins and whatnot. But in terms of the house brutes, this is the only one that's plastic, um, and that's the Piscean Specter pictured on the top left there. Now this guy is insanely good in the game, um, and he comes in your actual box, which is really, really cool. He doesn't, you don't have to buy him on his own, so he's really cost-effective there. Um, we've also got two Nactgals, two um, Psychoteric Worms, and two, uh, what are they called, um, Psygeists as well. The, the Psygeists are... You can, you can use them, and you can give them a miss. It's not really that important. If you want to use Psychoterica, you're probably going to get these guys. If you're not too bothered about Psychoterica, you can give them a miss. But the Nactical, I think, is the most important piece in the puzzle for Dulac. They are fantastic, fantastic pieces in the game. And I would say that if you're playing Dulac and you're not using Nactgals, then you are missing an absolute trick. Kind of like playing Escher without um, Death Maidens. Um, it's very, very similar. The Nactgals are just incredibly good. Um, so you are going to need this box. You also need those worms if you are going to be using the um, Psychoterica on those Psygeists there. So I think a box of the starting, the starting box, a box of this, and your weapon um, sprue as well is going to be enough to set you on your way for playing House de Lac in a campaign without really having any need of buying anything else. So really all you need to have here is these three things. Um, of course, what I've not highlighted at all is that you will need the rule book for each of these houses as well um, to be able to play them properly and sort of know them inside out. I would highly recommend picking up the House of Shadow if you're gonna be playing House de Lac there as well. So looking at the weapon sprue for House de Lac, uh, just quickly, let's have a look, let's bring it up. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's absolutely necessary, this one. You can't get away with not having it. Um, I wish it did have more options on it, but the options that you do have on it are pretty good. We've got some flamers at the top there, which um, you could, they're small enough to use as hand flamers, so that's kind of viable. Why not? Um, you're not going to use flamers, really. You've got some plasma guns there, too, which are worth having. I'd, I'd say that you're, you're probably going to run a plasma gun at some point in your Dulac list. Why not? We've then got some uh, las guns below that, but these are las guns that aren't strapped to the back, so that's nice to have. Um, we've also got two long rifles in the box there as well, which is lovely jubbly. We need those. We absolutely need those. And either side of that, we've got two web guns too, which we absolutely need as well, I would say. We don't need them, but if we want to be nasty and we want to play um, Dulac the way that you need to play them, then web, web weapons are pretty important in that, um, in that event. We've got heavy flamers there, which is a bit perplexing. I'm not sure why heavy flamers are in the Dulac list. They are dreadful weapons and you will never use them, so please just throw those in the bin. Uh, and then we've got grav guns, actually, as well. You do get grav pistols in the set. These are slightly bigger. These are grav guns. Um, nice looking weapons, and I actually really like them in the game, too. They're quite useful and they're way more powerful than you give them credit for. And um, when they really, when they do their, when they do it, when they do their work, they're really, really nasty. We've got some web pistols, uh, which you need as well. Web pistols are great. Um, and we've also got some plasma pistols and some melter guns there as well. So melter guns, devastating weapons. Um, why not have the option of having melter guns? Very nice. Um, they're nice and compact as well. The thing I love about all the Dalak weapons is they've got really cool looking stocks on them, whether they're pistols or guns, it's pretty cool. We've also got some throwing knives in hand there and some really nice looking heads as well. So some good head there. Um, in the Dulac kit, so I think, honestly, looking at Dulac, uh, you need this weapon set. You need, you need one box of each. So you need the, the, main, the main starter set, you need the um, Psygeist and Nackgulls, and you also need this as well. One of each is enough for you to be all gravy. Um, again, I don't think Dulac are a particularly beginner-friendly gang, so perhaps use Orlok or Goliath if you are completely flat fresh to the game. Um, but don't let me put you off. Um, you can play them in a more simplified style and they'll still be really fun. Um, same with Cordor, um, but you know, 
on my recommendation I would probably give those a miss in favour of something that's a bit more simplified I suppose. So moving on to the next house gang and this is the third one in the list is House Escher of course. So House Escher and um, this is the starting list so it's starting box for House Escher and it's actually really really nicely done. Again 10 fighters this one's got a really nice spread of weapons so you've got some stiletto swords stiletto knives in there for your juves. Plas pistols, stub guns, plasma pistols, which is really nice to have on the plastic sprue there. We've got auto guns, las guns, and um, shotguns in the box, actually, which aren't pictured. Which are nice because they've got feathers on them. Um, we've also got set, quite a lot of pistols, actually, in this box. We've got a shock whip on the leader and a bolt and needler combo, which is always nice to have. Um, and we've also got the um, excellent chem, uh, chem thrower there, which doesn't have to be used as a chem thrower. I'd say it could be easily painted up with orange uh, to make it look like a flamer as well. So you could totally use that as a flamer. I'm sure many people do if you wanted to go down the flamer route with it as well. So looking at the box here, actually, uh, and comparing it to your sort of general starting list with Escher, you could totally play Escher out of the box. Um, this is actually one of the only instances where you get a gang which looks okay out of the box. I mean, it wouldn't be optimal at all but you could play this out of the box and it would be okay um, so there you go food for thought um, I think the Escher box is really nice uh, and you don't need you don't necessarily need the other boxes to play Escher and that's quite unique um, in this case in, in what we're talking about I think so looking at the prospects and champions box here we've got death maidens now death maidens are the two in the middle there death maidens are an excellent 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 addition to an escher list they're not 100 percent needed i would say they're 99 percent needed <laughs> so uh, going back on what i just said about how good the starting escher box is the death maidens are excellent of course you could convert something up to make it a, a death maiden but they're quite nice miniatures really um, particularly the one on the left with the needle pistol um, and the claw up in the air there i really like that one the headdress looks so cool and the veil there as well so that's your super champion are they necessary absolutely i would say but you could easily convert one of your escher into a death maiden um, and you wouldn't necessarily need this box i don't think but you've got four wild runners in here as well now wild runners are your prospects do you need wild runners? Are they an essential part of Escher? No, I don't think they are. They're a nice thing to have. They've got a bit more speed, but a bit less strength, and they're quite a good screening tool because you get these little cats with them as well, your Felix cats. They are not necessary to running Escher, um, but they are nice to have, and they give you another option. Um, they're not particularly powerful, but they're cool. They're cool. Um, so that's my two cents on that i think honestly you don't necessarily need this box you can um 100 um get uh, the what you may call it the uh, just just i don't know um maybe convert something up for your death maiden or your death maidens plural hopefully you don't have more than one if you do have more than one then you're probably not going to have many friends at all so looking at the upgrade weapon kit for house escher here um you get some faces and some hairdos which is always nice to have because some of those hairdos are pretty cool we get some really nice looking uh, swords. Are they power swords? I think they are. And we get some chain swords in here as well. Some plasma guns, some melter guns, and some flamers. More shotguns, a needle pistol, which is actually missing from the plastic sprue, which is, a, which is nice to have. And a really cool looking heavy stubber, like a really long barreled heavy stubber. Some needle rifles just on their own, which is also really nice to have. Um, and we've got some auto pistols and some stub pistols by the looks of it as well. Some more grenades and actually a just a fist, a punching fist, which is nice to have. Um, so there you go. Is this necessary? Not really, but again, um, it's got some really nice stuff on it. There isn't actually a weapon on here that you wouldn't use, really, in a campaign. I mean, the melted gun's kind of overkill, but you could totally use it. The plasma gun is, uh, you know, nice to have on a champion, maybe. Um, I'd say plasma guns are an excellent weapon in Necromunda, so 100% you're going to use those at some point. The power sword, absolutely. Brilliant close combat weapons, as are chain swords. So this is a really nice upgrade kit. Um, I think it would be a really nice addition to have. It's not 100% needed, but if you're going to play them, um, if you're going to play them to actually win games and do some damage, um, then you're going to need some higher damage weapons out of the, out of the box. The only thing you get that does any sort of high damage in the in the main Escher box is your bolt gun really. Um, everything else is toxin or gas, which is not damage dealing. It's it's hard to quantify, but can be amazing, can be a wet fart. So it's a bit, um, it really does depend on that with chem synths and all, all the chem alchemy and stuff. We won't get into that for the moment though, but 
If you were new to the game, Escher, I think, are actually quite a good place to start. Um, why not? The chem delivery can make things a bit uh, complicated, but you don't need to get into that until it's sort of mid to late campaign anyway, really, when you actually do have lots of credits spare. But if you were to start a house Escher out of the box, I would say you just really need the, the main gang there and probably this sprue. I don't think you necessarily need the Death Maidens and Prospects, but they are nice to have. So there you go. You've got options there. And that's House Escher. Um, pretty, pretty easy to get into, I think. Um, so why not? So looking at the next one, of course, we are looking at House Goliath next, the big brutes of the game, the enemies of House Escher directly, uh, and what came in the original box when this got released as well. Now, Goliath have kind of been the poster boys for, um, for Necromunda since back in the day, since 95. And this box is really, really nice, really lovely looking miniatures. In fact, you know, all Necromunda miniatures are lovely looking. And um, these guys look great too. They're nice and big, they've got bigger bases. Looking at the spread of stuff in here, we've got 10 fighters, which for Goliath is really, really good. You're never really going to need more than 10 fighters in a Goliath campaign list. They're expensive fighters, so um, 10 is pretty good. Uh, in terms of the weapons, though, we've got some stub cannons. Uh, I don't really use stub cannons that much, but they're quite good. They, you know, they're, they're fairly cheap and they're fairly, um, fairly good for what they do. We've got a couple of bolt guns in here, though, which are essential. We have got some grenade launchers, which are also essential. Some axes, some brute cleavers, and some spud jackers, which are all very good. We also have some of your favorite renderizers in here as well, which are excellent weapons too. A power hammer, um, a stub gun combi pistol, I believe, which is also a really nice thing to have. Um, basically, yeah, everything that's in this box here is quite nice. The only thing that we don't have is um, combat shotguns, which is a problem, because I think you really need combat shotguns on a Goliath list. Um, but you could 100% play this uh, from the box and it would be okay because Goliath are really really powerful in the game um, even with this box here and all the, all the weapons that you've got in there you could still 100% mulch people uh, and walk all over most gangs anyway I'd say um, but you know if you really want to go to town on them we'll have a look at this uh, this um, with this weapon sprue in a second, but first up, we're just gonna look at the prospects and champions for House Goliath now. What we've got here is we've got Stimmers and Forgeborn, I believe, and the Stimmers are incredibly powerful in the game, but it's the same thing with the Escher, I think. You don't necessarily need the Stimmer models, you could easily convert someone up with two chain axes or two grenade launchers and say that they are a Stimmer, um, provided they look different enough from the rest of your gang. Now these guys are massive. The miniatures are nearly double the size of a regular Goliath, so they are huge. Um, but Stimmers are very, very good. Uh, do you need them? Not necessarily. I think Escher need... I think Escher need Death Maidens more than Goliath needs Stimmers. Um, you might disagree with that, but I think that's... You don't need Stimmers in a Goliath list to be powerful. They're already powerful. Escher do kind of need Death Maidens, if you ask me. Um, just to have that extra bite. Uh, then the Forgeborn in the back, completely unnecessary, do you not need them at all? Um, you can if you want, um, but I don't think they're very good. Uh, you're better off just running Goliath Jews if you ask me. They don't really do much different, you know, they're not like Orlok Wreckers, they're not like, they don't stand out enough from the rest of your fighters enough to be, um, to be needed, I don't think. So you could give this box a miss, I would say, and you wouldn't be too bothered about it. I think if you wanted a Stimmer, just convert one up. Um, there are plenty of models you could use from Age of Sigma, maybe with um, barbarian looking models that you could use with muscles, um, which would work really well. Um, from the Chaos range perhaps, uh, or from Warcry actually. So it's not necessarily needed. I'd say that the um, Goliath box on its own is, is pretty good, um, really. Looking, moving over to the uh, weapon sprue here for House Goliath. There's some good stuff on here actually, and the thing that you really want this for is the combat shotguns here as well. So important to note though, you only get two on the sprue. So two combat shotguns in here, but you don't want to spam these things because you will have no friends. You also get some more bolt guns, so that's nice to have. Some hand flamers, some bolt pistols, some axes, um, some two-handed axes, some two-handed hammers, and a giant demo charge by the looks of it. Uh, in the hand there as well. Some pointing hands and the all-important cigar hand there on the top right, which is excellent. And like an arm-attached uh, melter gun as well, which is nice to have. Um, and that's all your weapons on there. You do get some heads, some extra heads, and those are quite nice, actually. Um, sort of like very um, cyborg-looking heads, some of them. And of course, some uh, signature Mohicans there as well, so 
quite a nice kit, not necessarily needed. I, I think, honestly, as an arbitrator, I would let people use the stub cannons as combat shotguns. I mean, fuck it, who cares? They look, they look, you know, as long as they're all the same, as long as you're using them all as the same thing, it's fine. But if you do want those combat shotguns um, to look like combat shotguns, then absolutely you're gonna want this, um, just for those extra weapons there, so. In summary, House Goliath, very, very easy gang to get into. I think they're great for beginners because you're actually um, playing with probably the most powerful house gang in the game, I would say, from the get-go. Um, so very forgiving gang to get into. There aren't many complex things to do with House Goliath apart from gene smithing, and gene smithing is fairly simple to get your head around, really. You just pay for stat ups and stat downs. Not too much to think about. I wouldn't worry about the prospects and I wouldn't necessarily worry about stimmers actually. I mean, they're nice to have, but they're not an essential part of the, um, of the game. Um, so really, Goliaths are, are probably one of the most forgiving to get into, equally as forgiving as um, Escher, I would say, in terms of the actual stuff that you gotta buy. So there we go. Uh, now moving on to, of course, uh, House Orlock next, actually. We're on number four. This is House Orlock. Uh, now these miniatures, again, you get 10 in the box there. And just running through what we've got by the looks of it, we've got some auto guns, we have got some shotguns, or even, yeah, they are just shotguns. Uh, we've got stub guns, auto pistols, which are nice. I love the magazines on these guys, by the way. We've also got some, um, some uh, what are we called? Harpoon launchers, sawn off shotguns, servo claws, and that's about it, really. Combat knives. So for House Orlock, I think you get a really, quite a good spread there. Uh, this is a, a pretty good box, the nice miniatures, and they've got good weapons. However, they are missing a few things that you are going to need, I'd say. Important to note, though, that you do get heavy stubbers in this box. I think, off the top of my head, you get heavy stubbers in this box. Um, so you can swap out that harpoon launcher for a heavy stubber, and that's definitely something that is probably more optimal than using the uh, harpoon launcher there. Um, but let's have a look at the upgrade kit for House Orlock um, and see whether we actually find any value in this. Um, so the, here we go. We've got the Arms Masters, Wreckers, and um, Cyber Mastiffs here. This is a great box. This is a great addition to House Orlock, and I think every single thing in this box is something that you're going to want if you're playing, call, uh, playing House Orlock in the uh, in a campaign setting. So, starting with your Arms Masters, you've got two in here. These are your Super Champions for House Orlock. They're not quite as super as a Death Maiden or a Stimmer, but they are really, really valuable. Uh, they've got some special rules which make them kind of an integral part of House Orlock, actually. The guy at the front here is probably your Shotgun Savant with his Combat Shotgun, and the guy at the back top left has got your Servo Suit with your Arc Hammer, which is nice to have sort of later on in a campaign where you've actually got some money, maybe. The guys with the jump packs, of course, are Wreckers, and I think, personally, they are a great addition to House Orlock. And if you're not using Wreckers, Orlocks can be a bit boring, in my opinion. So Wreckers really do bring the fun uh, and make them a lot more of a fun gang. Um, now, Cyber Mastiffs, we've did this in my gang guide. They're very overpriced for what they do, but they look cool. And who doesn't like doggos? So great looking little pieces, and you can have those on your Arms Masters and your Champions and your Leaders as well. So 100%, if you're gonna get into House Orlock, which I would probably recommend as the best starting gang in the game, actually, um, I would say that you totally need this box as well as the starting box as well. Um, looking at the weapons here, uh, you know, your, your Arms Master is restricted to really only those two loadouts anyway, so that's, that's ticking that box already. In terms of the Wreckers themselves, they've got pistols, uh, they've got hand flamers, they've got grenades and knives. Um, that's really all you need. Um, yeah, can't say fairer than that, really. Uh, it's a really, really, really great box. Um, so one of those, one of each of those is awesome. If you do want to get the weapons upgrade set for House Orlock, though, it's got loads of good stuff on it. So we've got some bolt pistols, some plasma pistols, some monkey wrenches, which is cool. Uh, left and right um, bolt pistols and plasma pistols, by the way. Some combat shotguns. We've got some hand flamers. We've got some chain swords, some plasma guns, some power hammers, by the looks of it. Some flamers, some bolt guns, some melter guns, some grenade launchers, um, which I think you really, really need. Um, really nice to have on an all lock gang, actually. Heavy flamers and heavy bolters. I think the heavy bolter is an excellent weapon and really good with house all lock. So I would get this for the heavy bolters. I'd get it for the grenade launchers. I'd get it for the bolt guns, even the melter guns, to be honest, the chainsaws. In fact, everything in here is quite nice to have. You know, there's nothing in there that you're not gonna use, really. Except maybe for the monkey wrench, um, which will come in, in handy if you're, I don't know, fixing a car or something out in the ash wastes. Um, and you've got some nice little heads here as well with a goatee and 
more goggle, more goggle heads. Um, and we like goggles on these miniatures. So House Orlock, I would say, are probably a very easy gang to get into in terms of the mechanics and stuff. Uh, in terms of actually playing them in a campaign, though, um, really all you need is the first two boxes. You don't necessarily need this weapons upgrade sprue, but it's nice to have, and it has lots of extras in it um, to last you all campaign if you were to get it. So there you go. That's House Orlock. Now looking at the last gang, uh, where are we? Where is the last gang? Who are the last gang? Of course, it is House Van Saar. Now House Van Saar are the tech wizards of Necromunda. These guys have all the gears and no ideas, or some ideas maybe. Looking at this box, again, these are very elite fighters. They cost a lot of credits in game, so having 10 in the box is really good value for money. Um, this, in terms of the loadout though, and I love, I love the look of these miniatures. I don't like the non-helmeted heads. I love the helmets too much. The paint jobs don't do these guys justice, by the way. Um, but Vansar, if you look at the, um, if you look at the models here, we've got some some good weapons. We've got your Laz carbines and your Laz guns. We've got uh, and the, the Laz, what do we call it? The shotgun Laz thing as well. Uh, we've also got some interesting um, combi weapons here. We've got the Laz Plaz combi weapons here, which are kind of essential to House Vansar. We've also got lots of pistols too, so your sub-carbine pistols and, and whatnot, and your last pistols, plasma pistols, which is nice to have, and um, energy shields, uh, which are pretty essential as well. Shock staves on your leader there, and uh, a heavy weapon there, which I believe is a rad cannon. I could be wrong, but I think it's a rad cannon. And uh, no, rad cannons are, they're okay. They're not great, they're okay. Nice to have, but very expensive. Um, so in terms of value for money, in terms of credits in game, this is huge. Like these, these guys would cost you an absolute fortune. Uh, and you get some pretty good starting weapons in here. I don't really think you need a huge, a huge amount more. Uh, on the bottom right there, the guy with the energy shield, he's got what looks like a melter combi as well. I don't think I highlighted that one. So that's nice to have some high damage dealing stuff in there too. But House Vans are actually quite a good gang to get into, I think, for starters. They are very, very good in the game, like Goliaths. As they are the shooty gang, they have high, high, high ballistic skill. So, um, uh, and some good weapons in the box too. Now looking at the prospects and champions here, this is a weird one and it's gonna split people and it really does divide a lot of people, I think, with the aesthetics and the fluff of this, but we have these guys on hoverboards. Now, personally, personally, I can't stand them. I actually can't stand them. They remind me of a really, really bad film called Highlander 2. Uh, the first Highlander with Christopher Lambert was fantastic. Uh, it was an excellent film. Um, for pure nostalgia's sake, I grew up watching that, but then when the second Highlander film came out, I had these guys on hoverboards, I believe. I could be getting my films confused here, but it was such a bad film that it's made me, it's turned me off hoverboards, you know, even in Back to the Future. Um, I know, I just don't like the look of them. I don't like the design of them. I, I don't mind the idea of it almost, but... I don't know, hoverboards in the underhive, it's just not for me. And yes, they are quite good in the game, but I would never run them personally because I just hate the aesthetics and I'm not someone who games it at all. I would just go purely for rule of cool and I don't think they're cool, I think they're whack. So there you go. However, if you were to run them, then you get four of them in the set, which is quite nice. Uh, and they've got everything that you need on them in terms of the pistols and the energy shields and whatnot. In terms of the two super champions here though, you're architects or whatever they're called. Um, are these guys essential to House Vansar? Absolutely not. Uh, they're nice to have, but your regular champions are arguably better actually and um, with plasma guns and stuff with their high ballistic skill they can do usually a, a better job. But these guys give you some extra tricks in terms of cybernetica and stuff and they're quite interesting to have. They're usually a bit more close combat focused as well. So they're definitely an option. I don't think they're very essential to House Vansar though, neither are the hoverboards. However, on the flip side of that, the hoverboards do give you a lot of movement and a lot of extra um, maneuverability in a very slow uh, plodding sort of gun, gun line gang, I suppose. So I don't think they're essential personally. I think Vansar should be played um, slow and shooty. I think these guys uh, are kind of almost ruining the playstyle of Vansar in a way. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I just don't like them. I just can't like them, I'm sorry. You might love them, I fucking hate them. They're ugly as hell um, and I hate the fluff of them. So, <laughs> so do you need this box if you're a Vansar player? Absolutely not. It's definitely less important than say the Redemptionists or the, um, well in fact, not even the Redemptionists are that important really. I'd say that the, um, 
the Arms Masters and Wreckers are probably the most important expansion box for a gang, for a house gang at least. These guys are not. They are the least important, I would say. So there you go, that's my two cents on that one. In terms of the upgrade kit for Vansar, we've got lots of heavy weapon, heavy weapon options here. We've got a plasma cannon and a multi-melter. Now both of those are complete, complete, complete overkill. But, you know, you're playing House Vansar, you're the shooty gang. If you really, really want to kill stuff, then one of each of those is lovely. Uh, we've actually got a gang in our campaign at the moment which has got one of each of those and it is terrifying. Uh, the multi-melter for some reason isn't as ter terrifying as the heavy plasma gun at the moment. It's it's just, yeah, they're both really nasty though. Um, both really, really nasty. So it's nice to have those, but you're not ever going to run really deep with heavy weapons. Um, so we've got some really nice heads there. And we've got melter guns. Loads of melter guns actually. Four melter guns. Some rad guns, which I quite like. Some grav guns and some flamers. Uh, other than that, we don't get any basic weapons in there, which is really interesting. We do get some shock staves, some hand flamers, and some power claw or servo claws, sorry, with maybe a power knife there as well. Um, interesting box. Uh, it doesn't come with any energy shields, does it? It doesn't look like it. Um, so the only way you're going to get energy shields is in either of those boxes, um, which is a bit of a problem. But. You know, do you need this box? Absolutely not. Again, I think Vansar are actually the most cost-effective and cheapest gang to get into. So I hate this. I hate saying this because I'm at the end of this video now. We've looked at all six houses and by the looks of it now, all of a sudden it looks like Vansar are actually the cheapest and easiest gang to get into. There you go, I've said it. You don't need the weapon upgrade sprue at all. It's just not, not, not essential in any way whatsoever. It's the least essential and you don't need the upgrade kit for the champions and the... Um, prospects either. If you ask me, House Vansar really only need that one gang box and you're good to go. Um, so there you go. That was an overview of the models, the sort of basic six house gang models, what you need to start off with um, and what would be, you know, what would be your choices. Of course, you will need the books for each of these gangs to play the gang properly because you want to you want to learn about all the law and you want to learn about all the rules um, you can of course find that out off your mates and stuff but buy the book if you're invested in playing a campaign then absolutely buy the book so that you can um, properly learn how to play them and really delve deep into the law around your chosen house gang so there you go i hope that, that answers a few questions for you if you're um, on the fence about some of these gangs and uh, that may, may hopefully made your mind up um, in terms of which gangs to start with um, which gangs to get into and what you need really starting off so um, that was really all this this video was for um, and that's it from me i'm actually going to go and watch the fireworks for matariki tonight um, and it's going to be beautiful it's a beautiful night here in in wellington so that's it from me. Uh, please do like, share, subscribe. And again, thank you very much to my patrons. I appreciate the shit out of all of you. Uh, and long may it continue. So peace out.